From Miami-Dade, Broward, and the Keys, this is South Florida's CBS 4 News. I was sad, and I don't know. I feel bad for her and her parents. Right now at 530, remembering a friend. Good evening, I'm Erica Von Teel. And I'm Elliot Rodriguez. Students at Northeast High School in Oakland Park were in mourning while in school today. One of their classmates was killed when the car she was in collided with a BSO patrol car. CBS 4's Peter Dench is live at Broward General Medical Center where two other victims are recovering. And Peter, first of all, how are they doing? Elliot, Broward General says the two young people who survived this crash are in good condition. They're not talking right now, but one of them was the driver who is the stepsister of Kara Caitlin, who did not survive. Now, BSO says the driver veered into the path of the oncoming BSO car, but one big question was, how fast was that deputy driving? Outside Kara Caitlin's home, letters on a fence provide one memory. Neighbors say the 14-year-old girl had a passion for life and big dreams. It ended in this car wreck just before 10 Saturday night. The impact with the BSO deputy's car was so severe that it tore off the back end of the car Caitlin was in. She was a fun-loving girl. She always had friends over. Her friends loved her. Um, it's just a shame what happened. It was a somber day at Northeast High School. Students learned that their classmate, who had many friends and was a cheerleader, had died during the weekend. We were really shocked when we heard about it. Northeast freshman Cassandra Marin is also trying to cope with the loss. I was sad and, I don't know, I feel bad for her and her parents. Caitlin was in a black Honda Civic driven by her 21-year-old stepsister and a friend when the accident happened at the intersection of Dixie Highway and 56th Street in Oakland Park. BSO says the deputy was heading to a call where another deputy needed backup. His flashing lights and siren were not on because that's not required for backup calls. We do know that the driver turned in front of the deputy. She was turning left on a green light, so she would have had to yield to oncoming traffic. But at least one witness has claimed the 21-year-old BSO deputy Deputy Frank McCurry was driving well over the speed limit. And what about his speed? That's something that our investigation will reveal. A traffic homicide investigation is something that takes a long time. We invite any witnesses who haven't already spoken to our investigators to call traffic homicide and let them know what they saw. And on this Monday, students remembered Kara Caitlin. Purple is supposedly Kara's favorite color, so everybody is asked to wear it today in remembrance of her. Now, Deputy McCurry has been with BSO for about a year and has had no problems before. Investigators are looking into just how fast he was going. Meanwhile, the driver of the other cars had her share of problems. These records that we've uncovered show that Heather Meyer has been cited some six times in the past 15 months, cited for problems including improper lane changes and driving too fast. We're live in Fort Lauderdale, Peter Dan, CBS 4 News. Peter, thank you. A police officer was the victim of a car crash this morning and it caused quite a mess. Police say a City of Miami officer's cruiser was hit by another driver. That car slammed the police car into a building at Coral Way and Southwest 27th Avenue. The officer was taken to the hospital with some minor injuries, but he is expected to be okay. Police are investigating a bank robbery this morning in downtown Miami. Detectives say that a man robbed the Ocean Bank at 200 Southeast 1st Street. He demanded money from the teller and then put his hand inside his jacket saying he had a gun. The teller gave him money and he took off. No one was hurt. If you know this man, call police. Turning now to news for your money, falling crude oil prices are finally trickling down to your gas pump. A gallon of regular gas averages $2.82 in Miami, down two cents from last Monday. In Fort Lauderdale, that gallon will cost $2.80, down four cents. Statewide, gasoline averages $2.77, down three cents in a week. Nationwide, a gallon costs four cents less this week, coming in at $2.71. Two South, Florida business, two South Florida men are dead after the plane they were in crashed outside Chicago. The plane slammed into the ground in Sugar Grove, Illinois. That's a far western Chicago suburb. It went down just minutes after taking off from a small airport in Aurora, Illinois. As CBS 4's Gary Nelson reports, the plane was flown by a Hollywood, Florida businessman and experienced pilot. The plane went down about an hour after dark in a neighborhood of large homes on large lots scattering wreckage over a wide area. The twin-engine Piper Aerostar, like this one, was being piloted by 37-year-old Gary Bradford of Hollywood.
We're terribly sorry to meet you under these circumstances. No. I spoke briefly with the pilot's father today at the Hollywood technology firm his son founded 10 years ago. Well, he was a wonderful young man, but we're just, we're just distraught and we're just uh, trying to do some business here. The passenger who died in the crash was 32-year-old Drago Strahia, a senior associate in Pilot Bradford's Hollywood IT company. The two had been mixing business and pleasure, starting with a flight to Texas, then the stopover in Illinois on their way to Denver. Their plane crashed two minutes after takeoff from the suburban Chicago airport. I was at the house. I did hear the plane go over. It's, I heard a lot, very loud engine noise. I knew it didn't seem quite right, but about 15, 20 seconds after that, very large impact explosion. These people were evacuated from a home that was briefly set afire by flaming debris from the plane. At the Miami-Dade home where passenger Drago Strahia grew up, a family friend today reflected on the fragility of life. It's difficult because it, it was a young uh, fellow, but I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's, sometimes it's not fair. It's not fair. It was foggy with low clouds when the plane went down, but the NTSB notes that Hollywood's Bradford was an experienced, instrument-rated pilot, should have been able to find his way around just fine in thick weather. The investigation into just what caused the plane to crash could take months to complete. In the newsroom, Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News. Well, tonight, terrorism is not suspected in an airliner crash off the coast of Lebanon. The Ethiopian Airlines plane was carrying 90 people when it caught fire and went down minutes after taking off from Beirut early this morning. That set off a frantic search in the frigid waters of the Mediterranean. So far, no survivors have been found. Emergency workers have recovered 21 bodies. There is no word on a cause so far, but Lebanon has seen stormy weather since last night. Panama's former dictator Manuel Noriega will face justice in France. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to halt his extradition. Noriega is currently in a federal prison in South Florida, two years after he completed his sentence on U.S. drug charges. The former dictator had argued that he should be released and returned to Panama. And now CBS4 I-Team investigation is prompting calls for changes in federal law, and local seniors have mobilized to fight a crime that's costing American taxpayers $60 billion a year. ITEM investigator Stephen Stock first uncovered the extent of Medicare fraud based here in South Florida. Tonight, Stephen went along with seniors who are fighting back. <laughs> Quit pushing me around. 73-year-old <laughs> Janice Bovero says she suspected something was wrong when a local medical clinic and hospital billed her for a wheelchair and medical supplies she never needed and never received. Oh, they've been making me so angry and I don't know who to talk to. Preventing this kind of questionable and perhaps even fraudulent Medicare billing practice. Red flags, the date of service. Was the topic of this seminar at the assisted living facility where Janice Bovero lives, Grand Court Lakes. This is your benefit. We need your eyes and ears. The message? Enlisting seniors themselves in the battle against massive Medicare fraud. The uh, goal is to raise awareness on helping them, giving them that empowerment to identify fraud, waste and abuse, to identify errors in their Medicare and Medicaid, to know where it is happening, to, to learn about the types of scams. This effort is part of Florida's Senior Medicare Patrol on. Program, a statewide group of volunteers first organized in 2005. We feel that uh, if they're paying attention, uh, then, and we give them uh, a place or a number for them to call, that they will call us if something looks strange about it. But the senior patrol has taken on extra urgency after this. You have Medicare, right? Medicare, Undercover Medicare. video aired as part of a four-month-long CBS4 I-Team investigation, which showed firsthand how easy it is to buy and sell Medicare numbers, then fraudulently bill Medicare without providing any medical services in return. Especially some of the ones where actually they're just they've stolen accounts and that kind of thing, and they're they're billing them two and three months in a row. Uh, it, it, if if Medicare and other investigators know what's going on uh, sooner, then they can actually probably even go out and catch those people in the act. The I team discovered that South Florida is at the epicenter of the nation's Medicare fraud scams. Medicare's administrator says that Miami-Dade accounts for more fraudulent billing 
than the rest of the country combined. I would tell you that uh, your investigation with your uh, uh, station uh, has uh, certainly uh, created a uh, higher level of awareness. Prompted by the I-Team's investigation, local U.S. Congressman Ron Klein recently met privately with U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder in an effort to come up with new rules and changes in current law to help prevent Medicare fraud. You $100, me $100. I think. Before it happens. Instead of rolling something on nationwide, let's take South Florida, maybe a particular part of South Florida, and let's test it. Uh, and uh, apply our resources in a concentrated way in that area. Now, this problem of Medicare fraud has become so pervasive, so bad, that Representative Klein and several other congressmen from around the country have now established their own Medicare fraud hotlines in their congressional offices. Constituents can actually call into Congress with suspicions of Medicare fraud. And Representative Klein tells me he expects, because of our report, that changes in Medicare law could actually make it through Congress this year. I'm Stephen Stock, the CBS4 I Team. Stephen, thanks a lot. Still ahead, former Olympic skater Nancy Kerrigan's father has died. And her brother has been arrested. We'll have the connection between the two incidents after the break. Plus this in 15 minutes. Spain down at door and said, what the heck is wrong with you? Well, here's why he's so mad. Surveillance shows his mother being robbed outside a Target store. Inside her purse, the cancer medication she needs to stay alive. And that's not all that was taken. Then on New at 6, take a good look at these goggles here. Police say they could be a crucial clue in a high-profile murder at the Boca Town Center, and they need your help. We'll explain at 6. And I'm David Bernard in the Storm Center. The rain has come and gone, but now come the cooler temperatures. What you can expect tonight and tomorrow morning in your neighborhood. And we'll take a look at the weekend as well. You're watching CBS 4 News at 5.30 in HD, covering Miami Shores, Coral Gables, Margate, and your South Florida neighborhood. We'll be right back. This is our new neighborhood. I love it. <laughs> Former Olympic figure skater Nancy Kerrigan is back in the national spotlight, but for all the wrong reasons. Her brother is charged with assaulting their 70-year-old father. Daniel Kerrigan died over the weekend after a disturbance at the family's Massachusetts home. Prosecutors say Kerrigan fell or collapsed after a struggle with his son. Mark Kerrigan entered a not guilty plea today. He's being held on $10,000 bond. Back in 1994, Nancy Kerrigan was the victim of a beating for hire involving her rival, Tanya Harding. And now to the devastation in Haiti and the littlest victims who are now on our shores. Soldiers, Red Cross workers, and state social workers are about to be armed with a new weapon to help heal the children being rescued from Haiti. CBS4's Michelle Gillen says it's all thanks to your contributions to our Neighbors for Neighbors Adopt a Bear program. They've emerged from the rubble, surviving nothing less than hell. But their little eyes and short lives have witnessed more than most of us can imagine. As they head for and arrive in a new land and life in America, those ready to help them heal, thanks to you, are now armed with extra doses of love. We're calling them Bear Hugs for Haiti. That's exactly what we need, more Bear Hugs for Haiti, because these children, when they come into this airport, have really been traumatized. The Red Cross feeds them, but this feeds their heart and feeds their souls. If we can do something right now to make this a little bit easier to help them get through this, hopefully what will become, you know, a better phase of their life, that becomes incredibly important. So important to Lacey Hoover, chairman of the Herbert Hoover Foundation. Yeah, she jump-started the project, yeah. the foundation donating $10,000 for the first wave of bears. We need to give out a, a helping hand and show the world that we, as a generation, care about each other and we want to make each other's lives better. One bear hug at a time. Exactly, one bear hug at a time. And to the rescue, flying in the bears at no cost, the heroes at UPS, waiving shipping costs so more donations can go to the bears. The program that uh, Channel 4 has for the bears is so important to the children. UPS understands that the children are so special and it's not just the mental anguish and the physical anguish they're going through but it's something for the heart and UPS wants to be part of that. A first step at healing, the men and women at the Homestead Air Force Base poised to receive hundreds more bears tomorrow as their littlest visitors can at least be assured of a friend to hug. Michelle Gillen, CBS 4 News.
Those are fantastic. And I know you've adopted bears, and I've adopted bears. It makes such a difference. Uh, absolutely. And it's really easy to do. All you have to do is go to the website, adoptabear.org, and you can make such a big difference in the lives of these kids from Haiti and other children who get those teddy bears. It seems like such a small gesture, but it really can make a big difference. Okay, let's talk about weather. And you know David Bernard has had a, a smile on his face all day because of those saints. Yesterday. Oh, yes. I know he's really looking That's forward right. to that Super Bowl. <laughs> the Who Dat Nation is coming to South Florida, and it was, boy, the Miami Herald today had it perfect. Who Dat versus the Colts. And wait till you see the rivalry I have with Jawan Strader. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, they better get some nice weather for these <laughs> out-of-towners. That's right. We don't want it to be like the Super Bowl three no. years ago. Hey, we had some rain today. Look at real-time Doppler radar now. That is all pushed into the Atlantic, so things are going to be drying out for the evening hours. Here's some rainfall totals from selected neighborhoods over South Florida. Pembroke Pines, four-tenths of an inch of rain, nearly a quarter of an inch at Carroll City Elementary School in Opelika. At Lejeune and the Dolphin, just a tenth of an inch. And on the beach, just a little bit more than that. The heavier rain totals were in North North Day and in Broward today uh, as a general rule. All right, here's a look at the high and low temperatures today over South Florida, and we are looking at readings well up into the 80s before the cold front arrives. We reach 83 in Miami today, 81 in Fort Lauderdale, but we did stay at 79 in Key West. Look at the lows only in the 70s for the most part. Fort Lauderdale, one of the heavier rain amounts at over half an inch. The cold front again has now pushed offshore. Again, this is not like the bitter blast that we started off the year with, so it's a more mild cold front with temperatures mainly in the 60s right now, but we'll see the temperatures fall off tonight as skies clear and those northerly winds continue to come in. We're at the coldest point of the winter, at least by our normal temperatures. Our normal low now is 59 degrees, and in the next week or two, it'll actually start to go back up. Tonight, we're going to be a little bit below that 59, near 50 in the western suburbs and mid-50s along I-95, and it looks like points to the east. And for tomorrow, looks like a good one, a cool breeze, and we should see lots of sun. Here's our forecast then for tonight. Much cooler, drying out, and 54 for the low. For tomorrow, we'll reach a high of 73, so about 10 below today, a cooler breeze and we should see a lot of bright sun. Mold and pollen today both had a low count. The highest concentration showing up, that was the cedar. All right, here's a look at the work week. 73 for tomorrow with a cooler breeze. Wednesday morning, a lot of us, I think, could be down to the 40s, but then 74 in the afternoon. Pleasant sun and a little warmer in 77 on Thursday. A warmer breeze and a stray shower Friday. The next front could mean showers likely Saturday, but another cool breeze coming in for Sunday. So if that holds, maybe kind of a 50-50 weekend uh, shaping up for this week. Okay, thank you, David. All right, well, still ahead, out of nowhere. A Florida boy was just hanging out on the couch when an out-of-control car slammed into his home. Now he's in the hospital. We'll also have this story new at 6 o'clock. I'm Michael Williams. Help for Haiti. Look at the promises and the challenges ahead. That next on CBS4. Some children in Tampa are lucky to be alive tonight after an out-of-control SUV crashed into a house. Take a look at what happened. Police say a teen driver plowed into this house during a children's sleepover. The nine-year-old who lives there was hospitalized with a skull fracture, but he's expected to be okay. The driver was injured slightly. Attorneys for the mother of a murdered Orlando toddler were in court today with another surprise move. Casey Anthony's lawyers want to get a written statement from the ex-wife of Ray Kronk, the man who found Kaylee Anthony's body. The lawyers argue testimony from Kronk's ex-wife could support their case that Kronk and not Anthony killed the toddler. Kronk has not been charged, and police say that he is not a suspect. And now a story that could leave you shocked and angry. A mother and her son, who was battling leukemia, were robbed at a Target store in Colorado. Now take a look at the surveillance video of what happened. You can see the bad guy rip the mother's purse off her shoulder. Inside was her son's life-saving medication and more than $1,000 in gift cards and cash. She chased the suspect. I just had had enough and so I went after the guy because I thought if you think that we, I'm an easy target you are highly mistaken. And I just banged on that door and said what the heck is wrong with you? This well unfortunately they didn't catch the guy but the family is getting some help. A stranger gave them more than six hundred dollars. Just awful. Yeah, I wow. really feel for them. All right next at 530 have you lost that little piece of paper with a favorite recipe on it? Ever I don't know if you have but I certainly <laughs> yeah. have. Uh, that never has to happen again though after the break the online secret to locating your favorite recipes and other people's too. Right now here's Shannon Horry with what's coming up for us all new at six. As long as you don't lose the recipe for those homemade ice cream sandwiches oh. you can make this for us again Erica. I forgot about that.
those. Thanks. You got it. <laughs> While South Florida volunteers return home, members of our own urban search and rescue teams return to South Florida after more than a week of digging through the rubble in Haiti. Their first-hand accounts of the massive rescue effort coming up. Then the Miami-Dade Commission is set to name Michelle Spence Jones's replacement. When they will do it, and why some are so upset about it. Also, this. They are the hottest tickets in the NFL, tickets to the Super Bowl in Miami. Why these tickets are suddenly dropping in value? The story straight ahead. That and more, all new at 6. Next Insider, new Levi Johnston. His future with Sarah Palin's daughter, Rosie after Oprah. You got divorced. Why did you break up? And Nisi baking cheesecake with Carney. Oh Next Insider, God. tonight at 7.30 on CBS4. One third of people over 65 are wearing full dentures. Clear Choice offers a better solution. Dental implants in just one day, and they can last a lifetime. At Clear Choice, qualified patients can have their implants and replacement teeth in one appointment. Clear Choice uses the Noble BioCare immediate function procedures, so treatment times are shorter, costs are lower. Don't live with dentures any longer. For more information, call 305-595-0200. Football. Behold the Pro Bowl, the 2010 Super Bowl. Super Celebration 2010. The Super Celebration Series presents Super Art in the Park, Friday, January 29th at Hunt Circle Park in downtown Coral Gables with live music, art, sports stars, Super Bowl-themed activities for kids and more, and it's all free. The host committee thanks its official sponsors. The Super Celebration Series, brought to you by the South Florida Super Bowl Host Committee. When you want the whole story, count on the combined resources of CBS4 News and the Miami Herald, working together every day to cover your world. Some dealers offer low payments with a lot down, but at Maroney Nissan, we offer low payments with zero down. Right now, get a new 2010 Altima or 2010 Rogue, your choice, $239 a month, zero down payment. Altimas, Rogues, $239 a month, zero down payment. Or get financing as low as 0% APR. Maroney! Shop five Maroney Nissan showrooms or visit Maroney.com. And for seven day service, visit any Maroney location. At Mount Sinai Heart Institute, we provide the most options for patient care, and we've partnered with Columbia University. The goal of this partnership is to create the best care system for patients with cardiac disease in the United States. We've been advancing minimally invasive techniques in order to give our patients the best results possible. We expect to share technology and expertise to improve patient care. And that's really what it's all about, taking care of the patient. For Your Health is brought to you by Mount Sinai Heart Institute. Okay, if you're at home trying to get dinner ready tonight and you're the person in charge mm -hmm. of preparing the meal, you might hear these words. Not that again. <laughs> yeah, well, finding new recipes isn't always easy, but one creative woman wants to make it easier for cooks to have new ideas. We'll have that coming up a little bit later. Yeah, uh, we're working on that story, but I'm told right now we're going to go to David Bernard. What's right. going on, David? David? Why don't you go to the story about how you can find some great recipes right now. We'll get back to David in a minute. Okay. The hunt to find a recipe you think you saved, followed by the endless search for the ingredients. Oh, yeah. That looks nice with roasted onions. Okay. Should we do that then? Finding the right inspiration is never a problem for Jane Keeley. Not only does she have hundreds of cookbooks to provide inspiration, she's actually figured out a way to find Master. her favorite recipes easily. Now you can learn her secret by joining her new website, eatyourbooks.com. It's an online search engine for recipes in your own cookbooks. So um, you enter your cookbooks and that's your bookshelf. And then you're searching for recipes in your own cookbooks. We put in chicken and then we will get a drop down of all the different choices of chicken. You can even put in specific ingredients that you have on hand, and it will direct you to one of your books that has an appropriate recipe. Jane says this is much different than just searching blindly on the web for recipes. This way you're using your own books, and you've invested a lot of money in them, so this is a way to actually use your cookbooks better. And you know that the book, what the quality of the recipe is, you bought the cookbook, you've owned it, and you, so you can be secure in cooking that recipe. EatYourBooks.com also helps you get organized before you go to the grocery store. Thanksgiving is a good example where this would just be a, so helpful. Um, you keep deciding what, what um, recipes you're going to do. 
you add them to your menu and then when you're ready to go and do your shopping you say right put that menu into a shopping list and that creates a shopping list for all of the, the recipes you've chosen. Next, about 16,000 cookbooks. That's a lot of time. It costs $25 a year to be a member, or you can get a lifetime membership for $50. Wow, it's like that woman in the Julia Child movie, remember? Oh, yeah, Julia and Julia. <laughs> love wow. That movie. And David Bernard will be coming up pretty soon, exactly. by the way. The news continues now with Antonio Moore and Shannon Horry. CBS 4 News at 6 in HD starts right now.